This re 180 topic is made possible by a grant from Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Celebrating the joy of kids growing through interaction. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. This next topic is all about gathering evidence, investigating clues, putting together the pieces of mysteries, juicy stuff like that. And it's being brought to you by our new Read 180 detective, Daniela, who we call Ms. Mystery. She put together four videos that will help us learn about the past by investigating clues that have been left behind. Now, the clues could be a mummy, or a pile of bones, or even garbage. So I started by making a video on one of my favorite subjects, investigating dinosaurs, specifically my guy T-Rex. It's taken decades of detective work for scientists to try to figure the big guy out. But what's so cool is that they're still debating. Watch. The Great Dino Debate. In the Montana Badlands in 1990, paleontologists, scientists who dig up and study bones, spent the summer digging. Their reward? The first full Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever found. This Lizard King has long been a favorite topic of debate among scientists. Now, with more information, there's more to debate. One biggie they can't agree on is how T-Rex got its food. Was it a hunter stalking and killing its prey? Or was it a scavenger feeding on the kills of others? Here's their evidence. The hunter side says, look at the way those eyes and ears point forward. The better to hear and see its prey. Scavenger side, nope. Those eyes are way too small for hunting, and the nose is meant for smelling a rotting carcass. Hunters, the massive jaws are made to snap their prey in half with one bite, and the teeth are like sharp meat hooks, a mouthful of steak knives. The scavenger side agrees that the teeth are made for meat eating, but that doesn't prove that T-Rex actually hunted and killed. One of the things paleontologists agree on is that T-Rex was the greatest meat-eating machine ever. But as long as they continue to disagree on how it rounded up its food, the scavenger versus hunter debate will never be extinct. I know you guys have been at this a lot longer than I have, so hang in there with me. This is only video number two for me. In the first video, as archaeologists discover more evidence about T-Rex, they have more questions. The same is true with this next video. Explorers discovered a tomb with the remains and the possessions of a young man who'd been mummified. They're sure he was young, rich, and important, but how he died is a mystery. Sounds too juicy to be true, doesn't it? Well. Watch. Mysteries of the Mummy Sometimes digging up the past can raise as many questions as it answers. That's what happened in 1922 when archaeologists opened King Tutankhamun's tomb 3,000 years after it had been sealed. Although the treasures inside King Tut's tomb were incredible, they revealed very little about the boy king who began his reign at the age of nine. Archaeologists began to piece together the king's story from the clues they found. First of all, there was all that gold and treasure. Thrones, chariots, trumpets, jewelry, 5,000 pieces in all. It didn't take a genius to figure out that this had been one rich kid. But to really find out more about Tut, they had to take a look at his mummy. They could see that he was about 5 feet 5 inches tall, had a slight build, and that his golden burial mask was a good likeness. But they still couldn't figure out when he died, or why. It took an actual autopsy on the mummy to reveal more. They could tell by the development of his wisdom teeth that Tut was about 18 when he died, and x-rays showed that his skull had been cracked. Was that what killed him? Was it an accident? Was he murdered? No one can say for sure. It seems the more questions we answer about the mysterious king, the more there are to ask. Like King Tut, the first emperor of China was also buried in a ceremonial tomb completely outfitted for the afterlife. 
But according to legends about the Emperor of China, his tomb was bigger than any pyramid in Egypt. Plus, the tomb was supposedly surrounded by a huge army of soldiers to protect him. <laughs> when I heard that, I told Tai, just because I'm new, you expect me to believe that? Well, guess what? Watch. <sighs> Ancient Guards In 1974, two farmers in China were digging a well when they unearthed the amazing burial tomb of Emperor Qin, China's first emperor who ruled over 2,200 years ago. Legend has it that the emperor was richer than rich and did everything in a really big way. So even his burial mound is larger than any pyramid in Egypt. But before anyone can even get near the mound, they first come face to face with the emperor's unbelievable army of over 7,000 clay soldiers that are life-sized. Even though they're made out of terracotta, their weapons are real and actually fire. Archaeologists have been digging for nearly 30 years without reaching the actual tomb. But with the help of virtual reality, we can see some of the amazing stuff that, according to legend, is buried within. Because the belief was that your tomb was where you would spend your afterlife, many people were buried with a small replica of their home. Home to the emperor was in hundreds of palaces, so inside there are probably replicas of the emperor's palaces surrounding his coffin. There are also shimmering rivers that flow with mercury and a night sky studded with pearls. With a tomb like that and an army to protect it, Emperor Qin's final resting place sure doesn't need a do not disturb sign. As you saw with the tombs of King Tut and Emperor Qin, excavating sacred burial sites is a great way to get the real dirt about important people of the past. But how do archaeologists find out about ordinary people like you and me? In other words, how do they do some professional snooping into ancient lives? Well, people like Dr. Ruben Mendoza have some really cool methods. Watch. Tracing Trash You know, digging up the past isn't always about the big discovery, the gold and riches of ancient kings. Often it's about trash. Yes, digging through the garbage that ordinary people left behind. Hey, it's a dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it. And in this case, the trash collector is archaeologist Dr. Ruben Mendoza. Whenever we dig an archaeological site, what we are digging through is the trash that very messy humans have left since the beginning of time. So each artifact, that's what archaeologists call an object from another time, is considered precious. Artifacts can be anything from pottery shards to dinner scraps. In order to examine these artifacts, they're carefully cleaned and weighed. Then they're cataloged and filed away as a record of another time. Call it ancient recycling. And here's our garbage. What will future archaeologists think about us? Today, Ruben Mendoza is our trash collector of the past and is giving a close look at ancient people. Hey, Ruben, they say your business is picking up. Congratulations. You're leaving the ancient past and heading into a future topic. Nice work. 